Hi, I'm Asan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to focus on solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSAT Green Booklet, Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 2, Questions 5 to 9. And today we're going to focus on covalent bonds, polarity, and electronegativity of bonding atoms. So a covalent bond is a chemical bond that involves the sharing of electron pairs between atoms. So an example of a dipolar intramolecular covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen in water is shown here in figure one. Also note the intermolecular hydrogen bonding between the, the uh, water molecules here. You might have noticed obviously the symbols here. If you've read the stimulus, we know that this symbol here is a negative dipole and this symbol here represents a positive dipole. That's because the electrons um, are gonna be drawn towards the oxygen here um, because it is more electronegative than the hydrogen atom. And we can represent this by this funny looking symbol here, which shows that in the bond between say oxygen and hydrogen, the electrons are going to be shifted closer towards the oxygen atom than the hydrogen atom. So leading into the first question, question five, it's important to note that the polarity of a covalent bond is influenced by the electronegativity of the bonding atoms. So a greater difference in electronegativity corresponds to a more polar bond. So if we take a look at the first question, of the following, the most polar bond will be a covalent bond formed between the atoms of. So to answer this question, we just have to go to the table presented in the stimulus, take a look at the electronegativity values and, su and subtract the two values for the atoms and you're going to get a value. So you're going to get a number and remember the greater the polarity, uh, I guess it's going to be the greater the difference in electronegativity. So um, going through this just for brevity and for time constraints, I'll just go through how to answer the correct answer, which is going to be B. So it's going to be between sulfur and oxygen. So if we take a look at the table, sulfur has an electronegativity value of 2.58, whereas oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.44. So if you're like me, I don't like working with uh, decimals. I like working with whole numbers. So we can just convert it to a whole number. So let's say 258 and oxygen here is 344. It's up to you what you do in the exam, but I guess it's just easier in my brain to work like this. So if we just subtract, remember the smallest value from the highest value. So we've got 344 subtract 258 equals uh, you're just going to use some arithmetic here. So uh, 258 plus 90 is 348. So therefore, subtract 4, um, it's going to be 86. So our answer here is 86. And you'll find, or if you want, divided by 10, it's going to be 0 0.86 as the value. But um, if you do it for the rest, you'll find that uh, this has the highest uh, value. So therefore, the most polar bond would be the sulfur and oxygen. So if we move on to the uh, next question, it says in a part of a molecule, there's a carbon-oxygen double bond. So we've got a carbonyl group and we have a nitrogen-hydrogen bond. If these two parts of molecules were sufficiently close together, there would be. So let's just draw it. So we've got our carbon and then we've got our nitrogen with hydrogen so in this instance you just the point here is to just draw the dipole moments if you're a chemist you'd know straight away that oxygen is going to draw the electrons and nitrogen is going to draw the electrons based off the electron negativity values which you kind of know it's been instilled in you from say high school if you're not familiar with this chemistry i suggest you obviously go back and look into it because um knowing this off by heart can help you and save time in the game set but just by looking at the table in the stimulus, we see that nitrogen has a greater electronegativity than hydrogen and oxygen has a greater negativity than carbon. So we can draw our dipole moments. So negative, positive, negative, positive. So you know straight away if there are going to be interactions, so positive, positive repels, negative, negative repels, so it's going to be positive and negative attract. So if there's going to be an interaction, it has to be between nitrogen and carbon or oxygen and hydrogen. 
So you know straight away that it's going to be these combinations. So if we take a look through the options available, the only options that kind of fit what uh, the answer is going to be is going to be option C. So an attraction of the hydrogen atom in one bond to the oxygen atom in the other. So the answer has to be C. So now if we move on to question 7, it says covalent bonds occurring in amino acids include then between uh, an atom of carbon and nitrogen, so CN, and between sulfur and hydrogen. So we can just draw them out. So CN, and then we've got SH, and it's asking the positively charged ends of these two bonds would be the atoms of, again, similar to the previous question, draw the dipole moments. If you're a chemist, you'd know straight away that nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon and sulfur is more electronegative than hydrogen. So you can draw the dipole moments. So it's going to be negative. Oh, draw that wrong, but that's going to be positive and that's going to be positive. So you know straight away the positives are going to be carbon and hydrogen. But if you're not strong in your chemistry, you can go to the table providing the stimulus. And it kind of does tell you that you can see clearly the, um, I guess, electronegativity values of these atoms. So um, you know straight away, I mean, it will slow you down in the GAMSAT, but you can go double check in the table and you'll see that this is correct. So therefore, the answer for question seven is going to be answer B. So carbon and hydrogen. So it's going to be B. So now if we move on to question eight. So question eight states, of the following, the so this is important to note, the attractive force or the attractive interaction between atoms of two molecules uh, that are the same distance apart would be the strongest in. So they're looking for attractive forces. Remember, positive, positive, repel, negative, negative, repel. So they're looking for a positive and a negative. So straight away, just by looking at the options, A is two electronegative compounds, so you know straight away A is going to be incorrect. Um, C is two positive, uh, has two positive dipole moments, so the hydrogen and hydrogen, so you know C is going to be incorrect. So it's either B or D, because you've got S and H, which, so sulfur and hydrogen, which has a nice dipole moment, or a nice um, electronegativity difference, or so polarity in the bond is going to be high, and you've got nitrogen and hydrogen, so which also is going to have a very strong covalent bond with a high, um, with high polarity. So the quickest way here is to just go up to table one in the stimulus, and you'll see that uh, if you look at uh, sulfur and, sorry, let's get it again, so sulfur and hydrogen and nitrogen and hydrogen, you can see that nitrogen has a greater electronegativity value than sulfur. So therefore, the bond between hydrogen is going to be more polar, and therefore, it's going to have a higher attractive force. So the answer for A is therefore going to be D. So if we take a look at the last question now, it states, of the following, the factor that has the least effect on the strength of a hydrogen bond in a molecule is D. So this question is a bit of a trick because technically speaking, the, all the options provided do have an effect on the strength of a hydrogen bond, but what we're looking for is the least effect. So if we take a look through the list, it says that A, a type of atom which the hydrogen atom is covalently bonded to, yes, as we'd seen, electronegativity of atoms affects the strength of a bond, so A is going to be very strongly uh, affect the strength, so we know we can cross off A because it's not going to be the least, um, it's not going to have the least effect, it will have a very strong effect. So if we take a look at B, distance that the hydrogen atom is from the atom uh, on the other part of the molecule, if the distance of the atoms are very far away, the bond is going to be weak, it's going to be easier to break. It's a simple chemistry. So B is obviously going to be uh, important. If the bonds are closer, they're going to be stronger, so that's definitely not the right answer. If we take a look at, um, let's go down to D, type of atom in the other molecule, type of atom in the other part of the molecule to which the hydrogen bond, uh, hydrogen atom is attached. Yes, again, as we talked about in the stimulus, electron, uh, each atom has its own inherent electronegativity property, and it's just like A, it's going to affect 
the bonding properties. So D is going to be pretty important. You look at C, it says number of hydrogen atoms attracted to atom uh, to the atom on the other part of the molecule. It's it's not that much of a, it's not going to change the um, strength of the hydrogen bond. So you know C, although yes, it's going to have some sort of effect, it's not as strong as the other effects or as the other options provided. So you know straight away that the attraction of other hydrogen molecules doesn't change the strength of the hydrogen bond that significantly. So the, you know the answer for 9 is C. In the GAMSA, this would be a bit of a tricky one because it is process of elimination. But remember, they do love to ask questions where everything's correct, but you have to pick the most correct or the least correct in this instance. So if you have any questions from this uh, unit, you can pop them in the comment section below, or you can talk to us or contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thank you for your time. Bye now.